Assalamu alaikum and very good morning to our students. We meet here again for another lecture under the Data Communication and Networking course. Thank you for all the subscribers and likers for my video. Hopefully, you will continue with the course until the end of the semester. So, for those who have a like and subscribe to my channel, please do like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, the, the, the link button for other videos and also my subscribe, uh, the subscribe button at the end of this video. Thank you very much for your subscription and your likes. Hopefully, we will continue this course again, okay, throughout the semester. Okay, so today our lecture will be under module 11 of the Cisco Introduction to Network course, uh, which is IP addressing. So today, my lecture will be about the IPv4 addressing. So for IP addressing, we have two types of IP basically, which is the IPv4 and the IPv6. So I start the course with uh, the first chapter of this module, which is the, the IPv4 address structure. So the IPv4 address is one of the address that you have inside, a logical address that you have inside your computer in order to access a certain network. So within an IP address, usually in an IP address, you usually see a four sets of number like this, like 192.168.10.10. So we have these four sets of number. And these four sets of number, basically they represent a 32-bit hierarchical address that made out of the network portion and also the host portion. So the network portion, determine which network your PC is in, the host portion determine which PC that you use within the network. Okay, so overall, this uh, decimal looking addresses, four sets of decimal addresses, so they represented by the binary. Okay, so basically the address originally is the binaries, four sets of binaries, 8-bit binaries. Okay, so in order for us to see clearly, for us to distinguish the addresses clearly, so we often use the decimal translation of this binary. Okay, so for 192 is represented by this binary, 168 originally represented by this binary, 10 represented by this binary, and another 10 is represented by this binary. So you need to understand that all IP address, okay, they have a network portion and host portion, and with this IP address, we usually has what we call a subnet mask. Okay, we usually have what we call a subnet mask. Okay, so a subnet mask is another set of numbers like the address that accompany the IP address, so that you can distinguish whether uh, which part is the network portion and which part is the host portion easily. So comparing to the IPv4 address, it's almost the same, okay? So in order to identify the network and the host portion from an IPv4 address, so some net mask, okay? They are compared to the IPv4 address bit by bit from left to the right, okay? Remember from left to the right. So the actual process used to identify the network and the host portion is called ending. So what exactly is ending? So before I go to ending, so let's take a look about what exactly is a subnet mask, okay? So subnet mask is a number that helps distinguish which part is the network portion and which part is the host portion within an IP address, okay? So if you look at the subnet mask, usually they start with 255, 255, 255, something like that. So if you translate all those numbers in the sub mask, you will get into binary. You will get this number, okay? So you got, uh, for example, 255.0.0.0, .0 .0 .0, you'll get this ones, zeros, 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 okay? Continuing, okay, depending on what the sub mask is. If you compare with the binary from, uh, binary from the IPv4 address, okay? So this one, this subnet mask represented that all these ones, okay, all these ones location is a network portion, 
And all this zero location is a host portion. So if you have your original IP address, means that the first eight bits of your IPv4 address represent a network portion, and the next twenty, uh, the next twenty-four bit of your binary uh, of your IPv4 address in binary, okay, they represent a host portion, okay. So usually instead of sorry, must we are represented by the prefix as well. So means that okay, it's two five five. You have an eight bit of ones and twenty four bit of zeros. This means that this is slash eight, okay, slash eight. So if it's a sixteen bit of ones, it's a sixteen. If it's twenty four, slash twenty four, okay. So everything that is one represent uh, representing a network portion, and everything that is zero represents the host portion, okay, the host portion. So how do you combine the IPv4 address and the subnet mask to determine whether it's a, a network portion or a host portion? So this is where we have the ending part. Okay. So the ending part for the full purpose is to find out the network address. So network address means that is which network. So it's wholly a, a network portion. Okay. So it's a network address. So it's not for finding a PC host or something. It's for finding the network address. Which network is it? Okay, so it means by the network portion. So by ending the IPv4 address. So n means that if 1 and 1, it become 1. 0 and 1 become 0. 1 and 0 become 0. 0 and 0 become 0. Okay, uh, so 1 equal true and 0 equal false. Okay, basically. So when you identify a network, okay? So this means that you have an original IP address binary, IPv4 address binary, and you have the subnet mask binary, okay? You end all these uh, bits inside the IPv4 address with the bits from subnet mask, you will get a set of addresses, new addresses. So this address represents a network address okay means that all of them are network portion so this one is a network address okay so this network address means that okay like for example you have in your university the network address represent this laboratory okay means that the laboratory network address is this network okay and then within the network you have might be you have a lot of hosts and this one, 192.168.10.10 is one of the hosts inside this network address. Okay, so basically if you have an 8-bit, okay, 8-bit of a 0, you can get up until 256 numbers. Okay, from 0 until 255, 256 numbers. Okay, since the network address already taking the 0, the zero address okay 162.168.10.0 okay you have another 255 options okay of ip address to use for the host inside your network okay it's basically 254 the 255th one is reserved for the broadcasting of uh, all the net all the hosts all the hosts inside the network okay but that one is i will explain to you later okay so the network address represent, basically representing a whole uh, network of computers, okay? The whole network of computers. So, a network host and broadcast address, okay? This is basically three addresses that is important inside a network, okay? Network address, host address, and broadcast address, okay? So, network address representing the branch of the network the from the from the outside connection okay so from the outside connection okay this representing one network okay you have another network outside connecting to this router but this area that connected to this router is represented by one network so what is the network address of the host of this uh, uh, networks uh, the host of this network so this is where we have the subnet mask to use for to find out the network address.
Okay, so if the sun and mass is a 24 bit sun and mass slash 24, okay, host portion which is uh, for 48 bits, okay, so okay, so this one okay, representing a slash 24 sun and mass, okay, for network address of the slash 24, okay, so this one is a network address, okay, so network address. Usually, we have only the network portion and the host portion are all zero. Okay, network portion are all zero because you ending the original IPv4 address of any host with the sun and mass, you will get the network address. Okay, so when you have all zeros at the host portion, they are a network address. Okay, if you have all zeros at the host portion, they are the network address. Okay, and then when you have all ones, okay, in the host portion, after the network portion, they are called broadcast address. Okay, broadcast address. So broadcast address means that uh, forever, uh, this is address for you to send uh, this, the IP packet or any information data to all the hosts inside the network of 192.168.10.0. Okay. You want to communicate with all PC inside this network. Okay, you use the broadcast address. Okay, in between 0 and 255, which is from dot one to dot two five four. Okay, they are what we call a usable host. Means that any number from dot one dot two five four one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot one until one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot two five four, they can be used to address any Host, okay, like for example, PC, printers, IP phone, okay, you have a smart TV or something, okay, your smartphones, okay, they can be used to address all those end devices. Uh, easy to say, it's end devices, okay, can be used to, to, to determine, okay, the location, logical address of all those end devices. So you need to remember that within an IPv4 address structure, Okay, they are three types of IP addresses. Okay, which is the network address, the broadcast address, and also the usable host address. Okay, and for all these addresses, they are accompanied by subnet mask, okay, or a prefix. Okay, this one is to determine which part is the network portion or which part is the host portion. Okay. Okay, so basically when we, we talk about IPv4, okay, there are several types of communication when you use IPv4, which is the unicast, broadcast, and multicast. Okay, so unicast is basically transmission in sending a packet to one destination IP address. For example, the PC at 172.16.4.1, which is here. Okay, they want to send a unicast packet to the printer at the 172.16.4.253, which is here. Okay, so this is representing a unicast communication, unicast transmission. Okay, then we have a broadcast. Okay, so broadcast transmission is sending a packet to all destination IP address within a network. So this usually when uh, the original PC, they don't, uh, the sender PC, they don't know, okay, which address representing for the application that they're using, okay, which, is, which address that the application they are using is intended for, okay. So they just send, okay, all this, uh, all the data to all this PC, okay, all this host, all these end devices, okay. So when they send it, Okay, to all of this, okay, devices, okay, this is what we call a broadcast. Okay, we are calling the broadcast to all the PC. So when you send to all the PC inside a network, the only PC that didn't receive those information is the PC that are sending those information. Okay, the sender will not get the broadcast information. Only other PCs within the network will get the Broadcast with any other end device within the network will get the uh, data that had been sent by the sender PC. Then we have multicast. 
Okay, so multicast transmission is basically sending a packet to a multicast address group. For example, PC of 172.16.4.1, they want to send a multicast packet to the multicast group address 224.10.10.5. Okay, so 224.10.10.5, okay, representing, for example, this two PC. Okay, two PC. So this data from the sender will only travel to these two PC, ignoring any other PC within the network. Okay, so there are a lot of things to configure in order to conduct the multicast. Okay, but in this class, okay, we just focus between unicast and broadcast first. Okay, so types of IPv4 addresses. Okay. So IPv4, basically they have what we call a public and private IP address, okay? So as defined in RFC 1918, public IPv4 address are globally routed between internet service providers, routers, okay? So private addresses are common block of addresses used by most organizations to assign IPv4 addresses to the internet host. Okay, usually IPv4 that we have right now, they are not public IPv4. Okay, usually they are uh, for private using, not for private usage only. Okay, so if it's public, you can get access to other PCs within the, globally, and the global IP address also can get access to your PC also within a global environment. So this process a uh, very high security risk. So usually we have private address, okay, within a network. Okay, so private IPv4 address are not unique and can be internally within any network. Can be used internally within any network. So it means that the same IP address you might have in another network, okay, in another, uh, in another place, okay, but they are only used for that network only. Okay, so and then, however, private addresses are not globally routable. Okay, so the one that you have. Okay, inside your PC within one location, they might have an uh, IP translator later on. Okay, they translate into a global IP so that uh, your IP before PC IP within the network will not be used. They will use a public IP from your internet service provider where they send data from your location. Okay, so when you route to the internet, okay, they have uh, this is what I'm talking about network address translation. So you translate the IP address from the private IP for address to the public IP for address. Okay, so the job usually given to your internet service provider to provide those service. So sometimes, some IPv4 address they use for certain purposes, like for example, 127.0.0.0, which is a loopback address. Okay, so they, uh, they commonly identify as only 127.0.0.1 use for a host to test if the TCP IP protocol within that host is operational or not. Okay, you can use it and try this in your PC. Ping 127.0.0.1. Okay, and then we have a, what we call a link local address, commonly known as the automatic private IP addressing, okay, APIPA, addresses or self assigned addresses. Okay, so this one is used by Windows DHCP clients to self-configure when no DHCP servers are available. Okay. Previously, okay, all the IPv4 address, they usually uh, classify them into a server class. Okay, so they cl classify certain, certain range of IP address to class A, class B, class C, class D, class E. So when they class these uh, IP addresses, so there are a lot of wasting of IPv4 addresses. Means that, for example, if A is uh, only a certain point, uh, just a certain uh, limit, okay, and then if your location is in B or a certain location C, they cannot use the point in A. So it's kind of wasting the IP addresses that you have in A. So class full addressing wasted a lot of these IPv4 addresses. So these days we all all apply a uh, classless addressing. Okay, so we we ignore the usage of this class, which is uh, we don't use the class A, B, C, D anymore. So in the previous years of this course that we taught in the university, we used this class, but these days, okay, due to the update of the syllabus by Cisco, okay, we are not going to use any class addressing later on in 
uh, the future anymore. Okay, so in order to assign these IP addresses, okay, we have the authority that assign these IP addresses, which is, is the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, IANA, that manages and allocates blocks of IPv4 and IPv6 address to five regional internet registries. Okay, these are the five regional internet registries. Okay, so these RIRs are responsible for allocating IP addresses to all the ISP who provide IPv4 address blocks to uh, address blocks to smaller ISPs and organizations. So this one, in case of Malaysia, they provide those IP address to telecom and to TM, and from TM they distribute it to other ISPs that we have in the country. Okay, next let's take a look at the network segmentation. Okay, so for network uh, segmentation, we have what we call a broadcast domains and segmentation. Okay, so many protocol they use broadcast and multicast. Okay, so the switch switches propagate broadcast out all interface except the interface on which it was received. Okay, so the only device that stop broadcast is a router. Router do not propagate broadcast. Each router interface connects with broadcast domain and broadcast are only propagated within that specific broadcast domain. So if in case you have a network, okay, of an interface G00, so this one is only the broadcast, the broadcast domain that you have within the network. Okay, you cannot go outside of this broadcast domain. So when you have a big network, okay, like for example, you have a very large network with a large host portion, okay a large host portion so in case like this one is a slash 16 network where you have a 16 bit network portion and 16 bit host portion so 16 bit host portion you can get up until 400 users okay so this one is a very huge broadcast domain okay so problem with this broadcast domain okay is that this host can generate excessive broadcast and negatively affect the network what they mean by excessive broadcast means that for example one pc broadcast okay a lot of pcs okay a lot of hosts broadcasting at the same time it will congest the network even further okay so the solution is to reduce the size of the network to create smaller broadcast domain in a process called what we call subnetting okay this is what we call subnetting we reduce the large broadcast domain into several broadcast domain okay so means that from one network address you will have a two network address and from one broadcast address, you will have two broadcast address. Okay, so dividing the network address, which is from one uh, 172.16.0.0.16 slash uh, 16 into two subnets that have 200 users. Okay, instead of using uh, using a slash 16 prefix, which is a 16 bit, okay, 16 bit, uh, 16 bit host portion. Now we have Okay, a slash slash twenty four, which is we have a slash twenty four bit. I'm sorry, not sixteen bit host portion, sixteen bit uh, network portion, which is sixteen bit host portion. We change it into a slash twenty four means that now we have a slash twenty four network portion, twenty four bits for network portion, and we have only eight bit for broadcast. Uh, eight bits for host portion. Okay, so this one only propagated within a smaller broadcast domain. Okay, so reason for segmenting network is basically it's easier for you to maintain a network that is smaller. Okay, so segmenting reduce overall network traffic and improve network performance, and it can be used to implement security policies between all these subnets. Subnetting reduces the number of devices affected by normal broadcast traffic. So there are several reasons that you have. For example, you want to speed according to location of your network. Means that you have a multiple floor of a building, then you want to speed them according to the floor. So this is why you do something as well. Or other like, for example, you want to group according to functions. Like for example here, administration, human resource, accounting, students. Or you want to split them according to what end device you are using. Like for example, PC, server or any other IP phones or something like that. Okay, so these are the reasons why we do the subnetting for all uh, for all networks. 
So, okay, how exactly how you can subnet those networks? Okay, uh, how can you subnet those networks? So basically, when you want to subnet a network, when you got an IP address, which have originally a network portion or host portion, we can just increase the number of the network portion by ourselves. Okay, so you use a longer prefix, okay, a longer, uh, a, high, a, a, a bigger, okay, a longer pre, a prefix, okay, so means that you have more networks, Okay, more more uh, more network portions, and you have less host portion. Okay, so the longer your host portion is, the more number of hosts that you have within the network. The shorter your network portion uh, host portion is. Okay, the less you have within a network. Okay, so for example, you have slash twenty four, and then you have uh, only twenty two hundred fifty four uh, two hundred fifty four hosts that you can insert within a network. So when you want to subnet, okay, of an octet, okay, octet boundary. For example, here you have ten dot zero dot zero dot zero slash eight, okay. This is the original IP address that you got from your internet service provider, and you subnet it until it becomes slash sixteen, okay, uh, slash sixteen means that you have a lot of uh, networks okay with less uh, broadcast uh, less usable host comparing if you have only one network with a lot of hosts okay so here when you increase okay okay uh, you increase the network portion from slash in to slash 16 okay let me demonstrate to you from uh, from my uh, my notes okay Okay, you have an IP address of 10.0.0.0 slash A. So you translate them into your binary, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, which is 8 bit of zeros. Okay, 8 bit of zeros. Okay, you have these four sets of octets, okay, for this original IP address. Originally, you got this part as your network portion and this whole part for as your host portion, okay, your host portion. So here we have 8 bit, here we have 24 bit, okay. So right now, you don't want to have, right now you can have 2 power of 24. Okay, numbers of hosts that you can get. Okay, but we need to subtract this with two. Okay, subtract with two. One for network address, and another one is for broadcast address. Okay, so basically you have a two power of two power of thirty four. Subtract with two hosts. Okay, you have inside this. Okay, so now this one only one network, one network, okay, one network, one network with two power of twenty four subtract with two hosts. Okay, so now we want to split this from one network with a lot of hosts into a multiple network with less hosts. Okay. So basically what we did with this one is that we change it from slash 8 into slash 16. So when we have the original IP address with this one, okay, you Okay, we make it the network portion starts from here. Okay, uh, so this one is the original one, and then it continue we extend it up here. Okay, and then this is the new host portion. Okay. Okay, so this one is a network portion. Okay, so usually 
I usually call this one, this is the original network quotient, I usually call this as custom network quotient, means that you create it by yourself, okay, custom network quotient. So this range of binary can go from 0 until 255, okay, and this range of post quotient can go from 0, .0 until 255.255, okay, uh, this is the range, okay. So basically, what you have here, you can have, okay, 256 subnet, okay, subnet, instead of one network, means subnet, means that subnetworks, okay, with, okay, because we have uh, 2 power of 255, 255, okay, uh, times. 255 okay so this one is equal to I think around 65,534 okay host you have within the network so originally okay you have this one is 2 power 24 okay subtract with 2 okay now you have uh, 2 power of 16 subtract with 2 okay uh, so you have 2 power of 16 subtract with 2 okay so this one is the number of, sorry this is not the correct one okay this one's correct 2 power of 16 because you have a 16 bit here 16 bit usable host as 16 bit for host that you can use so 16 bit uh 2 power of 16 bits of the host portion subtract with 2 which is uh, for the network network address and broadcast address so now from the original 10.0.0.0 slash 8 okay you can uh, make it slash 16 okay from one network you become 256 network okay from one network with a lot of hosts you become a 256 smaller networks with a lesser host okay so that for example instead of one country okay having to as one network you have networks separated according to 256 cities and this 256 cities you have a 65,534 hosts within it so based on this uh, example okay you can see that you can either make it slash 16 or you can make it even smaller slash 24 okay so slash 16 you get 256 networks smaller networks with 65,534 hosts slash 24 because you expand the uh, host uh, the network portion further you can get okay another 65,536 possible uh, subnets with 254 hosts for each subnet Okay, when we have uh, okay, a slash 24 network, okay, don't think that it only limited into the octets, okay, the splits of uh, 8. It can go even further up until slash 13, okay? You know, don't, don't limit that into a 24 bits only. It can go up until slash 13, where you have only two hosts, two usable hosts within a network, okay? Uh, so this is... Uh, Two usable hosts means that you still have a network address and a broadcast address for these two usable hosts. Okay, so this is uh, the advantages of when you want to subnet a certain IP address. Okay, so this is when you want to create a subnet with a slash 16 prefix. Okay, if you have a slash 16 original uh, address. You can uh, create a, a subnet, uh, create a, a lot of subnet versions. Right? For example, you can create it into a slash 17, slash 18, slash 19, slash 20, 21, 22, okay, up to slash 30, okay, where you get this number of hosts okay, within the network. 
So when you create 100 subnets with a slash 16, okay, okay, you create sub 100 subnets with slash 16, okay, so you need, okay, 100 to you have, uh, you need to create them for 128 because you need to conduct the the submitting part according to the number of bits, which is for the maximum point is 2 power 7, which is 128 subnets. Okay, so you have another 28 spares. Okay, even though you only need uh, 100 uh, networks, okay, you have you have to create 128 because because the, the the addressing okay they only conduct them in binary and the closest number to 100 is 128. Okay, so you need to create a 128 sub. You have a 28 spares 28 network spares for different use. Okay. When you want to create 1,000 networks with slash 8 prefix, okay, you have this one or you have 8 bits of, I'm uh, sorry, you have 10 bits of new network portion, custom network portion that you need to borrow, okay. So from 10 bits, you have a 1,024 submets, which means that you have over 24 uh, networks left for you to expand, okay. So this is where where the expansion can be conducted in. Okay. So subnet. Okay, subnet to meet the uh, the requirements. Okay, basically you subnet your networks according to the required space, required host that you need inside the network. Okay. If uh, usually for the internet service provider, they have their public IP address, they will subnet them according to the needs of individuals. Like for example, a company will require a lot of hosts, they will give it uh, uh, an IP address that you can submit even further. For private homes, usually you have an IP address which is uh, not that uh, possible to include a lot of IP address at once. Okay, so enterprise networks will have an intranet, okay, which is an internal network typically using private IPv4 address, and they have a DMZ, okay, which is a company's internet facing servers device in the DMZ use a public IPv4 address. Okay, this one is for any outside access, they can access to it immediately. Okay, so a company could use the 10.0.0.0 slash it and subnet on the 16 or slash 24 network boundary. So the DMZ devices would have to be configured with the public IP address. Okay, so this one because you have a public IP, okay. Uh, so you need, uh, they need to configure the IP using the public IP address. This one, you can create a lot of subnet according to the provided IP address. Okay, so you need to minimize the unused holes basically in the IPv4 address, okay, and maximize the number of subnet basically. So if you have less holes you require inside a network, create using a smaller, uh, a larger prefix. Means that you will have more space to create more networks later on, okay. So when you when you planning a subnet, you need to consider the number of host addresses required for each network and the number of individual subnets needed. Okay, so example of efficient subnetting, like for example in this case, so 40 public IPv4 address, you have a slash 36. Okay, 25, you have slash 36. For 15, you have slash 36. And here you have, for 10, you have slash 36. Okay, and for 30, you have slash 36. Okay, this one is okay where you have uh, almost efficient distribution, okay, efficient distribution, okay, for the networks. It's not too big, it's not too small, okay. So sometimes, sometimes, okay, we can conduct it using the VLSM, okay. So this will where, okay, you split the network address even further, okay, like for example, you have a 25, 20 host, 15 host, and 28 host. Okay. A normal submitting that I've shown before, okay, you will need uh, you will need to create them according to equal size. Okay, like for example, if you have 8 bits, means that all the submits are 8 bits. Okay. 
So through VLSM, you can split those remaining networks into a smaller portion. Okay, so like for example, slash 27 mask will provide 8 subnets of 30 host IP address and therefore support this topology for in case of this topology. Okay, so if you want to split even further, okay, you will split it according to this figure. Okay, originally we can split it evenly. Now we want to split it even further. The one that use less, we split it into a more usable host. Okay, like for example, in this case, you have this visible host for the routers. Okay, router only two hosts. So you create a network, sub-network of slash 30 for these two hosts. Uh, for these two hosts. Okay. So the last portion of your network you split into 30. And you split into uh, several uh, subnet more slash 30. Okay. All the others they use slash 27. Only for the last subnet you split it even more into a slash 30. Okay. So this one, okay, will uh, will uh, will help you manage the routers networks even further without interfering the other networks. Okay, so this is what we call a VLSM. Okay, so when you have a VLSM, usually we have a larger, uh, uh, a smaller prefix to address a bigger network, and a larger prefix to address a smaller network. Okay, so like for example, for your routers, okay, especially for the connection of two routers, they have a smaller network which is less 30, okay, with only two hosts available. So this one, okay, they originally represent as one network, one large network, but we split it into three. So in this case, okay, in case something happened to one network, you will not interfere with the other network. Okay, so for planning all of this IPv4 address, okay, you need to plan with uh, okay, IP network planning is basically crucial to develop a scalable solution to an enterprise network. So you need to okay to develop an IPv4 network. While addressing scheme, you need to know how many subnets are needed, how many hosts of a particular subnet required, what devices are part of the subnet, which parts of your network use private address, which part is public, and many other determining factors. So you need to examine the required requirement of your organization in order to conduct a network planning. So you perform a network requirement study by looking at the entire network to determine how each area will be segmented. Determine how many subnets are needed and how many hosts per subnets. And determine DHCP address pools and layer to VLAN pools within the network as well. Okay, this one we will uh, discuss even later. Okay, so within a network, there are different types of devices that require address, which is the end user client, servers and peripheral servers that are accessible from the internet, intermediary devices and gateway. Okay, when developing an IP address scheme, it is generally recommended that you have a set of pattern, a set patterns of how address are allocated to each type of device. Okay, so there are basically uh, a little bit of calculation involved in this case in terms of subnetting and VLSM. I will do another separate video for that. So I hope you guys uh, okay will uh, remain with the course so that I can demonstrate to you even further how to conduct the subnetting and VLSM subnetting later on. So, uh, for your assessments, okay, in terms of our test, we will not involve uh, VLSM and also uh, submitting yet, okay, in the future it might, okay, so I think that's all for today, uh, I'll see you guys later, so uh, all the best uh, from me, and hopefully you stay safe, stay at home, and stay studying, inshallah, assalamualaikum.